Amen. We have a bigger destiny. We are called to do bigger things. When God calls a man beyond his family, beyond what you call relationships, beyond even his biological family, he has called them for something else. I'll give you two examples. The Bible speaks about Joseph. Joseph had a family in the natural. But he was taken away from his family when he was still little. Because he had to be the one to go ahead of them so that he can be able to deliver the rest of them. When they had become many. The Bible speaks that at the time when uh, his father and all the rest, including Benjamin and the rest, had to come to Egypt when he was governor. They were in a place of famine. But God knew when the boy was little that there was a time when he would be 40 plus where his family will need someone to have gone ahead. Touch your neighbor. Say nothing has happened to you by mistake. Say nothing has happened to me by mistake. Everything I've gone through is to bring me to a point of my destiny. That is the thing. There is nothing else. When God delivers Moses from the hand of Pharaoh because at the time the little boys were all being killed. And then Moses is moved from the rest and then he's put on the riverbank. And that is where Pharaoh's daughter found Moses and said he looked at him and he loved the boy. There was a favor, a special favor that was on this boy. Because in the same time, they were killing men, boys. They were killing sons day and night. But when he looked at him, he did not even care that he was, he was for the Hebrew. He actually said, the scripture actually says that he must be one of them. But there was no they didn't allow the lord did not allow for him to be killed and at that time the bible says that he took him he took he took her he took him as his own but the only reason why god safeguarded moses was so that at a certain point he might be the deliverer for all the children of israel he was not listen to me you cannot tell me that there were no other hebrew boys that were his relatives that were killed it means his relatives his blood and king were killed but he was saved so that he can go and deliver people that were not his relatives touch your neighbor say your calling goes beyond your family and your relatives and your friends hallelujah some of you are called for chinese no one is clapping you don't want to go to china some of you are called for chinese you don't have to look like them but the Lord will call you and he's calling you for another kind of people. Another nation altogether. Some people, I hear so many people saying, oh, I am called. I, I don't know why everyone wants to go to America. So even in their dreams, they'll say, I dreamt when I was in America preaching. <laughs> I don't know how they've painted America in your eyes. But it is possible that God has called you to go to, the, to South Korea. Amen. Are you willing you need to understand that your individual call, the call of God on your life, might never have anything to do with your family. This, my brother, my sister, my something, even your own parents, it might have nothing to do with your family. And it has everything to do with another nation of people that God wants to save. When he takes Moses, Moses, amen, he goes to deliver his people. But essentially, they are not his people. The funny thing is, Moses had a family. And I'm telling you for a reason. I'm going to, to, I want to minister to you about something very important. But if you have not yet understood what your purpose is, you might miss what God wants to release to you today. Moses had a family. The Bible says that when he left Egypt, he went to Midian. And when he went to Midian, he went to his uncle, Jethro. And there, in that place, someone said he had a wife. Say, and children. He was there 40 years. 40 years. Say again, he had a family. He had a wife and children. When he encounters God in the burning bush, God separates him from all these things. When he goes back to Pharaoh, he does not go with his wife. He does not go with his children. As a matter of fact, there is no known record of 
his wife and his children and what happened to them and yet the entire scriptures are full of israelites where they were saying we are going to stone you you man you take us back the man did not even go to god to say but now god you've given me this burden but now my family is left in the other place there was no time he was thinking about his children if they've eaten or not and yet he had people here who were saying you take us back where meat was he took on another burden that had nothing to do with him if you never understand that God has called you for something bigger than what it is you're looking at, you will miss the purpose of God in your life. And if you miss it, you will miss everything else that is hidden behind it. Because our assignment is the only gateway that we have into God's supernatural provision. This thing that we say, I need money to fulfill my purpose. What, 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 what? You start the purpose. God will ensure that he will release everything that you need to bring it to pass. Hallelujah. Touch your neighbor say, look beyond what you see. Now in our time of manifestation, which is when the light of the Lord is come upon us, there are things that must happen. Yesterday we were speaking about the fact that we need to consecrate ourselves. When we consecrate ourselves, we are inviting the Lord into our lives. And whether you like it or not, if he makes your life his dwelling place, it means that he's going to work from inside you. I don't know if you have been in the spirit. I, there, there's some things that I can speak about and they may look like fables to you but when I say that you dance with the Lord it means that you have been praying in the spirit and then for some reason in the nature you are dancing but you are dancing with the Lord it, because in that time he has released a sweet aroma and you cannot wait it is because he has taken you over you don't dance because you want to dance you will even dance in a funny way and yet in the nature you know how to dance but it is God dancing through you it is not you dancing it is not about what you are doing. Sometimes you're in prayer and the Lord, you will fill your hearts. They cannot move, but it looks like you are punching something or you are uprooting something. It is because now he has engaged the time of war. But until you allow him to sit in you, he cannot win the battle for you. Someone said the battle belongs to the Lord. But you must allow him to be in you so that he can fight the battle for you. Hallelujah. Today I want to speak to you about another level, another opportunity on this pathway of manifestation that we call the gift of men. Touch your neighbor, say the gift of men. You say it with understanding. Someone say the gift of men. I want us to read together so we understand what this is about. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 4. And this scripture might mean many things. Chapter 4 verse 7. Because it speaks about the church and its administration. And everything else that the Lord has given to us. In verse 11 it speaks about the fivefold offices. Where we have first apostles, then prophets, then teachers, evangelists and pastors and teachers. Take me back to 7. I want to show you something. Go read 7, 8, and probably 9. The Bible says, But unto every one of us, every one of us individually, is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. That means all of us have a level of grace. Have grace. Take it back. Have grace. But it is according to the measure. Someone say it comes in measure. Measure of the gift of Christ. That means according to the gift that God, that Christ has given you, then you have a certain level of grace. So sometimes we say this person has grace. I don't know how you call it or what you call an anointing or what you call something else. We say this is the measure of grace that is given unto the gift. And we can tell in the natural that this person has maybe a higher level of grace or a lower level of grace. It is the reason why men might say ah ah, not a mafta. Have you heard about that thing? They say, mm -mm, I've tried it. Let me go to another place. Because it is given in measure. So the scripture says, according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Now, Christ is the gift. Do you, do you realize that? Christ is the gift. When he comes into your life, he will determine what measure of the gift he gives you or what gift he gives you. So there are two dimensions. Sometimes the gift comes as, um, as let's say, a work of the Lord in someone's life that this man has the gift to prosper people. 
it is a gift. It's not like he's worked towards it. It's not like he went to school and graduated in prospering people because they will not even do anything. Sometimes you are just a part of the gathering and by the time you leave, doors have opened. Things have happened in your life. It just happens automatically because of the measure of Christ's gift in that man. But then there is another level of gifts that I want to talk about, which is what I want to talk about today, the gift of men. So let's go to verse 8 so that I can bring this to understanding. There, wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, this is Jesus we are talking about, he led captivity captive, and everyone said with me and gave gifts, say gave gifts unto men. Exactly what I was saying, but that word that says gave gifts unto men is in two dimensions. The first dimension is about getting a gift, like let's say, a lot of people actually think prophecy is a gift. And yet, in the book, in the, uh, in the, in the Old Testament, um, Paul is trying to speak to us, all of us, that we should desire to prophesy. Touch your neighbor, say, desire to prophesy. Can we prophesy today, all of us? Some people are laughing because they are saying, no, what am I going to say? He says, we desire to prophesy because he has understood that there is a power in prophecy. As long as we're standing right with God, we are in the position of authority to decree a thing and it shall be established. And in that, in that power lies the, what we call prophecy. Everyone can prophesy. I keep talking about this thing and I think people think that I'm just trying to inspire them. All of us can prophesy. The office of the prophetic has nothing to do with your ability to prophesy. As long as you are a man of God, you are born from above. That means you are born again. You have the ability in you to prophesy. That is why he says, desire to prophesy. And there are others that are given a gift of prophecy. But when the spirit stirs you on the inside, you will speak a thing. Some of you have done this in your homes. Some of you have done this when you are praying with a group of people. And then all of a sudden, you have been holding hands with other people and you're praying. And then the Lord is still something on the inside of you. The, the spirit of prophecy is stirred on the inside of you. And you will say, this is what is going to happen to you. This is what is going to happen. You, God, is calling you to this. And then all of a sudden, it will end. It is a gift. You understand what that is? And when we are looking at those gifts, then in the scripture it has the gift of miracles. Special miracles. Not everyone is given gifts of special miracles. Not everyone is given the gift of faith. Someone said there are different gifts, but it is the same spirit. So this man might be given a gift to prophesy. The other one is a given a gift of special faith. The other one is given a gift of doing special miracles, but it is the same spirit. And maybe at a later time we will understand that even if at the beginning you have a certain gift, there is a way in the spirit that you can grow so that you can, you can move to another level of operation according to the spiritual gifts. But this is not for today. We will learn it another time. And so the scripture says, and, they are, and there are differences of administrations. So this means that even if I am called as a prophet, there will be another man called as a prophet and another man called as a prophet. But our administration of that office will be different. You understand? He gives someone the authority to speak things into being. He gives the other the authority to uproot things from your life. He gives other. Uh, uh, you, you realize that Isaiah is a prophet? You realize that Ezekiel is a prophet. You realize that Daniel is a prophet. You realize that Abraham is a prophet. But there is no time in scripture where you see Abraham speaking about the end time. And yet, for the administrative office of the prophet in Daniel's life, that is what he was given to speak about. So he's, when you read the book of uh, Daniel, you will understand what is going to happen in the last days from the beginning to the end. And he was a prophet in that dimension. But we don't see Daniel doing miracles. Do you see that? In the dimension of Elijah as a prophet is different from all this. So he says, and there are differences of administration, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. Amen? Now, number seven. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Touch your neighbor, say, all of you you say you 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 are supposed to manifest according to the gift 
that God has given you. Now ask your neighbor, what is your gift? Oh, we might do this the whole day before we find out other people's gifts. For to one, number eight, for to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. Do you see that? Now that means the word of wisdom is a gift on its own. And by the way, you don't need to be a prophet of God for you to have a word of wisdom. The word of wisdom operates to you every other day. It is something that comes from the Spirit of God. You will not know what to do and then the Holy Spirit will tell you what to do in that moment. That is the word of wisdom. And to another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. The word of knowledge is the one that knows things about you that only God knows and can only be revealed by the same Spirit. I want you to understand what I'm talking about because these are the gifts. There is a word of wisdom which is like, let's say, is the normal level and then we move to the word of knowledge and then we move to, to another faith by the same spirit. Now this word faith even if you see, now faith is a substance of things hoped for and everyone has a level of faith. But this faith is a gift. When someone has the gift to speak to mountains, when someone has the, the gift of faith that can do all things, even when you bring a thing and it is the opposite of what is possible, the man will say this thing shall be possible. It is a gift. So that is the dimension of that gift. And he says to another faith by the same spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit. Now some of you are coming to life because you are the ones that are dreaming when you're touching people and they are healed. You're touching the crippled and they are walking. If you're seated next to someone who has had this dream, tell them this is you. We need to see this gift. Amen. Of the, uh, and the gift, another the gift of healing by the same spirit. Next. And you know, anyway, like I said, we will get into the understanding of those levels of, of the spirits, uh, rather gifts. To another, the working of miracles. And it is possible for one man to have all these gifts. I mean, uh, okay, touch your neighbor, say you might be that man. <laughs> he says, to another, the working of miracles, to another, prophecy. You see that these are gifts. To another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. There is a hierarchy there, but we will get into it at the time when we need to get into it. Take me back to the scripture I was in. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 8. So we've understood, it says, and gave gifts unto men. Now those are the gifts that were given unto men. And I said they are two-dimensional. That means that the first dimension will give gifts to men. Usually in a conference like this, uh, by the direction of the Lord, the Lord will speak to some people and say, you are called as an evangelist. He's giving you the gift of healing, depending on, his, on what it is he wants to give you. That is how the gifts are distributed. But the other dimension of that scripture that says, and gave gifts unto men, is that the men, touch your neighbor, say the men, can be the gifts. Amen. And the reason why I say it, it is important for you to understand your purpose and destiny is because then you will know that you are a certain gift. You. You are a certain gift to a certain set of people. Let's say, like Moses, there would not have been a deliverance of the children of Israel if Moses was not their gift. God's gift to them. So maybe you are God's gift to your family. Maybe you are God's gift to a certain people in Karamocha. People don't want to go and preach in Karamocha. Maybe you are God's gift to this sort of uh, company where he has placed you. You might be God's gift to your husband. He cannot help himself. With you, he can be built into another man. With you, he can do all things through Christ who strengthens him. Because you are his helper. If you never understand this dimension of gifts that are given through men, you will miss because now, now this is exactly what I want to talk about. First, give me the last verse, verse 9, so that we can get into this ministration. He says, Now that he ascended, what is it? But that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. So uh, I'm, I'm going to give you understanding of this because maybe it is in another language. Um, it means when Christ ascends. He, he, 
the, the gifts can only be distributed at the time when he ascends. While he's still here, he is God and he's doing the miracles. When he ascends, then he's going to choose men. Touch your neighbor, say men. He's going to choose men. That he's going to give his ability. And those men are supposed to be sent into the world according to his assignment. So that they can be gifts to the men that are on the line, on the earth. Are we, are, we, are we getting there? So I want to give you some examples so that we understand. But this is what I want to talk about. Now listen. Jesus can come and encounter all of us individually. It is possible. But it is also possible for the Lord to choose to encounter you through another man. And the dimension where he releases a man to support you is something that we should not despise. It is something that we should understand that according to the way the body of Christ works, every man that is sent to you is carrying something for you. Every man that is sent to you is carrying something for you. Some of you are here and maybe someone, somehow, the Holy Spirit directed you here. But before he directed you, there was a hunger on the inside of you. There was something that was a problem. There was something that was a miss. You are looking for something that you can connect with. And when God sends the man, he is essentially telling you, this is my gift to you. I need to move you from this place where you are stuck so that I can take you. Some of those men are your answers. You can be praying. You can pray. Let me tell you. You can pray an entire year and God will not answer you with himself. You can pray and fast and say God this is what I need and when he realizes that that is what you need he sends another man to give it to you because by the, the dynamics of the kingdom they are people that have already gone ahead of you God does not need to reinvent the wheel there are people he has already released the gift if the bible says that he has given someone the gift of healing that gift resides with the man do you understand that? It is with the man. That means when you are praying and saying, God, I need healing. The Lord is going to direct your footsteps to the man. And it is that man. Touch your neighbor. Say, it is that man that will release the healing for you. Not God. Do you get the difference? Because God will use the man. So this gift of man is something that you need to look out for in this way of manifestation. There are men that will never be manifested with an encounter with God. There are men that can make other men. Elijah was able to make Elisha. The Bible says in the book of 2 Kings chapter 3, the Bible says that this was the man, they are speaking about Elisha, and they say this was the man that washed Elijah's hands. He was only a servant. He was only serving. He did not do anything. That is the only thing that he was doing. Until the time when God sends a man to them. Let me give you an example. In the book of 1 Samuel, you can find the scripture. Must be chapter 16. The Bible speaks about David. All of us know that David left, lived in the wilderness. And when he stayed in the wilderness. When he lived in the wilderness. The Bible says that when he was there, all he did was look after sheep. Listen to me. No one knew him. Touch your neighbor. Say there is a day for people to know you. Say there is a day when God is going to raise you up and everyone will know you. There is a day according to his plan. It is there. No one knew who David was. As a matter of fact, even in his own family, his own father, when they were anointing him, his own father did not know that he was part of his children. I hope you have read scripture to understand this. The Bible says that one day, the scripture say, one day, God said to Samuel, someone say a man. He told another man, get ready your jar, fill it with oil, and go to yeah, to, 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 to Kish's family and see what so that he can anoint a man after my heart. I have found a man to be king. So God did not come himself. He spoke to another man 
to go and anoint another man who understands what I'm talking about. Today, let God send a man to you that he may anoint you for your next level in the name of Jesus. Touch your neighbor say, may I never miss it. My prayer is that you never miss it. Because sometimes we look beyond. There is, there is a, a, a certain cat category of Christians that say, me, I'm going to pray. You will pray. And this is why I'm giving you these examples. You will pray. But according to the protocol of God's operation, you can only get the answer from another man. It is the way he has designed it, you cannot change it. He will not stretch his hand so that it comes on you. But he will stretch his heart. He will stretch the man's heart so that through that heart, you can be lifted from your problem. So the Bible says, he told him to anoint, to get the oil and go to the place. When he went, the Bible says, they collected and gathered everyone that was important. Everyone that had a name. And that time, Eliab came. Now the funny thing, this is what I wanted to show you. The father, he knew how many children he had. But when they said, where are the children? He brought the other one. Jesse brought the another one. Eliab, he brought all of them. Until, until the Samuel. Because every time that they presented someone, the Lord said, that is not the one I've chosen. And they presented another until they were all finished. That means even this father, Jesse, had forgotten that he had another son. I don't know if I'm speaking to someone that even when they have an important meeting at home, they will forget you. Touch your neighbor say, God will not forget you. He will send a man to anoint you for your next level. Whether you like it or not, even if that man does not come from your family, God has already positioned a man who is a gift to you, who will give their life for you, who will fast and pray for you, who will go ahead of you and make sure that you fulfill your purpose. So Samuel waited until there was no one else. And then when they asked Jesse, Jesse says, oh, there is another one. But he is in the wilderness. When you stay in the place of prayer, it is possible that people might not notice you at that time. But I can assure you, there is going to be a day when you arise and shine. By the anointing of the Lord, in the name of Jesus, touch your neighbor say, this is my day. The Lord is going to remember someone today and cause a certain man to come and anoint you for your next level. He will work, he will wake up another CEO. Does someone understand me? I want you to understand that in this case we are talking about Samuel. And Samuel is supposed to anoint David so that he can become king. But there is a CEO today that will not sleep until he says, This person he must sit in this chair. It is the way men are set. Let me tell you, when God wants to promote you, he does not need to use a saved person. Can I say that again? Because some people say, I don't want to associate with people that are not born again. But those can be the messengers that God has sent to lift you. Do you understand me? Because when God has loved you, he will use even your enemies to bless you. The people that don't like you will end up blessing you. So, right now, when we are talking about the gift of men, you had better understand that there is something that is being stirred up on you. And when that anointing comes on you, there will be men that will not sleep until they have held you by the right hand and taken you into your destiny. The Bible says that at that time, when they said, oh, there is another one in the wilderness, Samuel said, we are not going to sit. No man is going to sit. You can imagine. Presidents are there. Kings are there. All the clergy. The most important people. They are all there. And then they say, we are not sitting until the little boy comes. Someone say, I am the little boy. Let me show you something that is on another level. This little boy, in his place in the wilderness, he had encountered God. Do you understand what I'm talking about? As long as you have this encounter with God, the doors shall open on your behalf. People shall make and congregate and meet on your behalf. Do you realize that David was not part of this meeting and its arrangement and the food and he did not have any input in it? When I stand here and I say, you will travel without paying for passport, for ticket, 
for air for air ticket you will not pay for anything i know what i'm talking about there is a moment you get to where this your encounter becomes your currency who understands what i'm talking about and then god makes men sit and think and plan and buy until they hand you over the things when they are already paid this is what is happening this man david had stayed in the wilderness praying and seeking the face of the lord they are men let me help you understand they are men that in the natural they might be young but in the spirit they have traveled yes yes and went to the ends of the world in the spirit so in the things of the kingdom we are not talking about natural age you are older than me i am older than you know that is why someone was able to tell men who are bigger to stay standing until the little boy comes that little boy is only little in the natural in the eyes of god he is older than all these other people that are seated here because he's the one that has his heart he's the one that has the heart of god so when god wants to elevate you wants you to shine he will send a man to you i pray that you have the discernment enough to recognize that this is the man that god has sent for my elevation and if you realize it may it be quicker in the name of jesus that is the first scripture we see david as a man from the wilderness but this david has a destiny amen he has an actual destiny waiting for him he's supposed to be an actual king i already said ask your neighbor what their gift is some of you are seated there and you have no idea where you are going or by what means you are going and then there is a man called saul saul was looking for donkeys with his servants and then he ended up in an encounter with a samuel someone said with a man he did not encounter God. They are men that encountered God, the likes of Moses. But this man encountered another man. But it was already hidden in this man to make the other man a king. So yes, there are men that are made by godly encounters, but there are other men that are made by other men. That is why Jesus says, "Follow me." He says to the Peters, "Follow me and I will make you fishers of men someone say make you that means that they are making was hidden inside jesus that means that if you understand that there is a man that is sent to you it could be that your car is inside that man it could be that your traveling is inside that man god i pray someone understands this at that level because at a certain point god has already released a mantle of authority and given it to that man that whatever it is they will speak into your life that thing shall come to pass it is just given like that someone say it is a gift you understand so god before he sends you to a man he will check what it is that you need and he will say you you belong to this man you you belong to this man it is just because in this generation we are big headed we are proud we are lovers of self we just think oh i will make it on my own you cannot make it on your own that is why this is a body of christ it is not an individual thing it is a body that means what you cannot receive here god has hidden in another man the bible says of uh, Acts, the book of Acts, chapter 10. This is something very interesting for me. Must be about Cornelius. The Bible says that this man was praying in the spirit. Let us read this verse so you understand what we are talking about. He was praying, and when he was praying, he was sent to someone else. There was a certain man. Give me verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God. Someone say always. Prayed to God. In other words, okay, the, the information that they are giving us is important to us because if we are always in the presence of God, we might expect that our answer will come through God himself. You need to understand what this is about. 
he saw in a vision this man that was always praying he saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of god coming into him and saying unto him cornelius next verse and when he looked on him he was afraid and said what is it lord and he said unto him thy prayers and thine arms are come up for a memorial before god that means god had heard his prayer amen and now send men this is the instruction he has said, God has heard your prayer. Now, send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. This is the same Simon Peter, the apostle of, God, of Christ. And he says, he lodged with one Simon Etana, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. Let this verse first enter you. And then we can continue. He answered him in a vision. This is a man that is praying day and night. And when God's time for answering came, he said, this is the instruction. Send some men to Joppa. You will meet a man called Simon. And his surname is Peter. He lodges by the seaside in someone's house. And then when you meet him, he will tell you. Do you understand? He will tell you what you ought to do. God has already heard your prayer. And then after he hears your prayer, he says, now you can go and meet Prophet Dawn. She will tell you what to do so that this thing can happen in your life. Who understands what I'm talking about? And this doesn't mean that all the men that are sent to you are me. Uh -uh. Do you understand that? I'm just giving you an example that is logical to you so that you might understand what the Lord is talking about. This man is a man that fears God. His entire house fears God. Some people have the tendency to think that you know because I'm praying to God, my answer will come through God. Touch your neighbor say, your answer is hidden in men. In men. And when you come before those men, there is something that you must look at that is beyond the man. You must understand that God has brought me into this relationship with this man for something greater. And I keep this relationship until it opens the doors of my destiny. Who understands what I'm talking about? May your destiny doors be open today in Jesus' name. You must come to that understanding that in the demonstration of what we call the spirit and power, there are things you will see. Some of them you will not even understand. I have people asking me, why are we putting money here? And then we are stepping on it. First touch on the... Oh! I have so many people asking, now why are we stepping on the money? Why aren't we holding it? Also me, I don't know. You will ask my father when you encounter him. You see, these are directions from the spirit of God. Jesus says, I only do what I see my father do. He doesn't have to understand it. This is the first thing that Jesus told me. First thing. Because I said, why do things happen and happen quickly? And then for others, they don't happen. He gave me that example. Three times, he, he made a blind man see. Three different blind men in different ways. Their problem was the same. This one can't see. This one can't see. This one can't see. This one he spoke to. This one he touched. This one he spat on the ground, made dirt, put it on his eyes and said, go and wash. Same problem, different answers. And then he told me and he said, if you want to get quick results, you ask me what you should do in that situation. It can be the same situation. I can have four people saying, I have no money. This one has no money. This one has no money. This one has a rent problem. And the problem is the same. But God has a different answer for this one, for that one, for the other one, and for the other one. Because in the things of the spirit, there is no one answer fits all. There is nothing like that. Even when we start to pray, or let's say, let's say we, we fast. If you have a, an issue that is an issue, depending on the level that it has gone, you will need to fast dry. Touch your neighbor said, you know what dry is? For some people, you will need to fast dry. For some of you, like apostle usually say, you need ICU. We say, stay here. It's okay to Jacob, you know, to Jacob, you know, to Guterres. Ah, then you can continue. Because the state that you are at, the demons are surrounding you. There is no way you can free yourself from those demons. And some people want panado. They come and they are saying, Musa, Panado. 
without a full diagnosis of what their problem is. They just say, Prophet, I want you to pray for me. Just pray for me. Everything will be fine. That is your own prescription. The prescription of God must come from him. And the prescription can be go and pray. You don't need to fast. And here you are saying, I'm fasting. I've been fasting 40 days. Now I'm going to enter another 40 days. You will fast until you have no stomach and there will be no answer. The things of God come with direction. So the scripture says that when God heard his prayer, he said, go to that man. What if you are the man that right now, God is sending a man to you, God, I pray someone is in this place. Say, you are praying. I keep telling people, you can struggle to meet the prophet, but you can struggle in the presence of God. There are people I call in the middle of the night. Not because I want to call them, but because God has said, you had better call this person. This is the problem. Call them and do this in the middle of the night. Because they have touched the heart of God. And now it comes to me as an instruction. The Bible says in the issue where Isaiah was dealing with Hezekiah. The Bible says Isaiah was sent to Hezekiah. He's a king. He's a man that knows God and loves God with all his heart. The Bible says he told him go and tell him to put his house in order because he is going to die. And then Isaiah just did what God asked him to do. And then when the news reached Hezekiah, Hezekiah says, no, 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 no. The Bible says I cannot die. He says he went to the wall and he hid himself in the presence of God and cried to God and said, God, I have been in your presence every day. I've walked in and out of the temple. I have fasted. I have given. I have tithed. I've done this. He gave his complaint to God. And when God's turn was, it means God had his prayer. When it was God's turn to answer, while Isaiah, the prophet, someone said, I'm mad. While he was walking out of Hezekiah's house, when he was just in the courtyard, the Bible says, the word of the Lord came back and took him and said, go back to Hezekiah. I have heard his prayer. There is a man that will pray, but the answer will come through another man. So when God brings you here, touch your neighbor. So when he brings you here, you have to understand that he has something he's hidden in the man for you. God, I pray someone is in this place. So when the gifts of men appear to you, touch your neighbor, say when they appear to you, you do well. Say you do well to keep that relationship. To keep that relationship. Give me the book of Genesis chapter 13. I will not dwell on it a long time, but I want to give you the examples. The Bible says that when God called Abraham, he called Abraham. He was called Abraham. He's the one he called. He never called Lot. And Abraham went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had. And what? And Lot with him. He did not take Lot. Lot followed him. Do you understand this? Lot followed him into the south. Give me about verse 13. In this situation, first give me the next verse, because this is where... The, the sense is, I don't have the time to take you through everything. In other words, God called Abraham. And Lord understood that this is the man I must work with. Do you understand that? So the Bible says, and Abraham, this is verse 2. And Abraham was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. It does not say Lord was rich. So among all these men that went away, there was only one man who was rich. In the same verse, in the same chapter, when you go down, you encounter a time when they are saying, both of them, when Lot is saying, uh, the, the empire of Abraham has grown so huge and the empire of Lot, who had nothing, had also grown so huge. So the man that you work with can determine your wealth. There are men you will work with and you will gradually grow even in wealth. There are men you will work with and you will lose everything. Touch your neighbor. I pray, we, I, I pray God gives us discernment. You, get it, you, you, you start working with a man and then you lose this. Uh, who knows what I'm talking about? You lose this thing. You had a car, 
you lose it. You had this, you lose it. You had this, you lose it. You had friends, you lose them. You had good associations, you lose them. And then you come to a place where you're saying, but what is going on with my life? And if God has given you discernment, you say, ah, 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 there is a man I met two years ago. From the time I encountered that man, everything has gone wrong. And yet there are men that are gifts to you that even without them giving you money in terms of cash, they will give you wisdom enough for you to create big things in your life. The Bible says that they, they were not able to live in the same place. And now that is the place. That is the most dangerous place. Because sometimes we taste of the prosperity and we never understand where it has come from. We never understand the source. And then we feel like we can make it on our own. And then we say, okay, let us separate. This is exactly what happened with Lot. Lot says, ah, uh -uh, this space is not enough for us. And Adam, uh, rather Abraham tells him, okay, good. The land is here. If you choose to go this side, I go this side. If you choose to go this side, I go this side. A man that is blessed of God, even if he's left with nothing, I can assure you, he's going to be picked up the next day. And he will be able to fulfill his destiny a hundred percent touch your neighbor say the man you work with determines your level of prosperity they separated themselves this was lots doing he had an, he had underestimated the fact that his prosperity was coming out of abraham now abraham had a covenant maybe this is the most disturbing thing with christians because when we talk about covenants, they'll be like, what about, also me, I might have a, a, a covenant. And maybe I don't know it. Touch your neighbor, say, we get covenants from the presence of God. From encounters. The Lord met Moses and said, I will go before you. I will go before you. Even in the natural, there was a cloud there 24-7. In the natural, during the day there was a cloud. In the night there was a pillar of fire. It was there. He had to go before him because it is a matter of covenant with him. Now, Abraham had a covenant because before he left his, his, his land in Ur, before he left that place, God had said, come go to a place I will show you, I will bless you. He did not walk on his own accord. He was walking on covenant. So the man that has a covenant with God can determine your outcome. That because of the covenant that he had, the Bible says that he met Ab Abimelech and Abimelech wanted to take his wife because the wife was very beautiful. And just at the thought, he had not even touched the woman. He just thought of it. Eh? God had already struck his entire family and lineage with barrenness. They would never have given birth if it wasn't for Abraham. When you have a covenant with God, so when I am talking about men as gifts to you, they are men that by, the, by their encounters with God, they have received a covenant with God. The covenant is given by God. It is not given by man. And you cannot claim it if it is not given to you. You walk in it. So when you have that encounter, Abraham was prosperous because of a covenant. So when you walk with a man that has a covenant with God, you will by default partake of that covenant. But if you separate yourself from the man who holds the covenant, then we cannot tell what is going to happen to you. Now, this scripture should help us. When Lot separated from Abraham, the next scripture we see when he is lost in Sodom and Gomorrah and he's at the mercy of the people that are sinners. The Bible says in the book of Abraham, in the book of Genesis, I don't know if there's a book of Abraham. Genesis chapter 18. The Bible says that that time there is something that happened. They are men, three men that walked by, by what? By Abraham's house. And he called them and begged them to eat. And after he had served them, they re released a word for his prophecy. God, I want to explain this properly. There are many of you that 
have a prophecy on your life. Some of you, you received it when you were 10. Some of you received it before you were born. There are things people have said. You are supposed to be a great evangelist. You are a big billionaire. You are a multi-billionaire. You see yourself as the the, the owner of a huge company. All these things are true. But in the natural, there is nothing to show off. God had already given Abraham a prophecy. And had said, you are going to give birth to a son. But this son, this prophecy had no deadline. Someone say had no deadline. And then when he got this man and he served them, the Bible says that we should entertain. Entertain. Because... I mean, if, if you don't know the scripture, you have heard it. Go look for it. We entertain strangers. The strangers are men. But you need to be alert in the spirit to recognize that this man has been sent for me. He begged those men to come. When they came, they did three things in their life. That means that he was walking around with a prophecy that had no deadline and he didn't know when it was going to happen. But after they were filled, the Bible says they said, next year, about this time, next year you shall give birth to a son. Sarah was there in the kitchen she just laughed because she had heard the thing many times but there are men that are sent and when the men are sent to you they are sent to bring things to pass in your life. In the name of Jesus may this be the time that is set by the Lord for these prophecies of yours to come to pass in the name of Jesus. May this be the time according to his calendar. May this be the time that all the doors open in your favor in the name of Jesus. When they mentioned the timing, it happened exactly as they said. And it is at this time that the men, after having realized that this is God, they are the ones that say, we are going down to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah because it has come the wrath their sin has reached the neck of God. And now, the Bible says, then Abraham started negotiating because Lot was there. Lot was growing in this direction of abundance. The minute he cut himself off that encounter in that destiny, he actually went in the opposite side. And he had to be rescued before he even was caught up in Sodom and Gomorrah. He had, there was a time when people came and took away everything that he had including his children and the wives. Everything. And it was still Abraham that had to go and pick him up. Touch your neighbor say, there are men that are sent to you. You do well for your destiny to attach yourself to those people. There are times when I've spoken to people and I said, and this is just for your understanding. There are times I've said, if I identify that this person has something for me, I will not leave. At that time, I become stupid. And I know. The people that walk with me to some places, they know that I can become stupid. It, can, it is possible that I can sit in the best chair, but at that time, I will not sit. God knows how many people are begging me, ah, you don't have to kneel, you have to sit here. I'm saying, uh-uh, for me, I have seen something you have not yet seen. I must not leave it here. I cannot. I cannot. It doesn't matter. Sometimes, you know, sometimes I will go to a place and I, I need to see someone. Not because I don't... I don't see people. I don't see men of God because I want them to do something for me. Uh -uh. I know that they are carrying something for me. So I will even go and see them when there is no reason to see them. I'm not saying that's what you should do. I will say, because for me, I know they are carrying something for me. If I take a seat, I take it. He can even ask me. There are men I meet. There are men of God. And they say, what is this seat for? I say, ah, I've just brought it. I don't want him to know. He should even never know because what I'm praying for is not I want money, not I want this. Uh -uh. It is something that goes beyond the natural. God has showed me what they hold in the spirit and I'm saying good. As long as I know it, I will connect myself to it until one day it erupts on my behalf. And it cannot fail because that is a matter of covenant. I know what covenants do. I hold a covenant with God. So I know what it does. If I speak to you today and I say that by this time,
God is going to give you a job that will give you $5,000 every month. I know what I'm talking about. If I am in error, God will deal with me, but he will follow that word and fulfill it. That is the power of a covenant. He will not break his word. If he has said that whatever I say, he will follow to fulfill, he will fulfill it and then take me in the corner and be like that thing that you said. Uh -uh. He will say that one. No, 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 no. And he's, he's good at convicting you. You will not sleep. You will not sleep. He will wake you up and be like, first come, we talk about this thing. It will not leave your heart until you say, okay, now, I did not mean it like that. I meant it like this. And he said, okay, this is what you should be doing. But the covenant remains because he has said he has to bless you. The covenant of the blessing, for example, the Bible says that whoever blesses the man shall be blessed. That is just simply the way it is. Gamba neighbor, uto chongere zaako. Mkwa teko vulonji, mgambe, uto chongere zaako. Kakati ya walokole, let me even leave you. The Valokole can be there. The, uh, for me, I see them as the likes of Miriam and Aaron. Because they can be like, also me, I can pray. Come on, neighbor, also me, I can pray. Also me, I can pray. Also me, I can fast. Also me, I can prophesy. My dear, there are different administrations and operations. There are different levels. Let me show you something. This is the last one. We have to close. Saul, this man, Acts chapter 9. Saul was killing the church. Amen? And when he was, he had gotten letters to go and destroy about 10 churches, he encounters Jesus of Nazareth. Encounters who? Someone say he encounters God himself. Because when you see Jesus, you have seen God. He encountered God. And when he encountered God, his eyes became blind. And while he stayed in the presence of God, God sent a man. Someone say a man. God I, I, I don't, I've, I've, I've lost the words. God made the man blind so that he could send a man to open the eyes of the man he made blind. You understand that? God works with that protocol protocol. He can even be he can allow the enemy to touch your finances himself. God sent Moses and said you go to Pharaoh. On this side he's saying I have sent you Moses you go and speak to Pharaoh. Then he goes on Pharaoh's heart and then he hardens it. Same God. Do you see this? So Saul has an encounter that blinds him. But at the moment when God wants to give him an answer, he sends a man, a normal man. I like the fact that the Bible says he is a disciple. Someone say a disciple. Say a normal disciple. I am waiting for the day you are going to be the man in another man's dream. I'm waiting for the day a man, let this be the day in the name of Jesus. Where the man dreams that when he comes to you, you are going to lay his hands on him and he will be healed. Let this be the day of the manifestation in the name of Jesus. The time when men are sent to you. Now this is the way men will be sent to you in this year in the name of Jesus. Listen to me properly. Men will dream getting their car and giving it to you. Who has heard what I'm saying? Touch your neighbor say, because you are here, be alert. I said in this year, there will be a man who will sleep and dream. The angel of the Lord saying, get these keys and give them to Ezekiel. Who understands this? May this be your portion this year in the name of Jesus. We need to come to the place where by the fact that we have gotten these encounters and we have understood, may it be quickened in the name of Jesus. Oh, you're pressing my spirit. Don't press my spirit. <laughs> Amen. Ah, these people have understood the secrets of the kingdom. Listen, I want us to reach to a point where we are not. Look, they, they, I've given you the formula. The formula says you pray to God. But when God answers, 
he presses a man to bring your answer so what if you are praying today and you are saying god promote me by tomorrow the ceo himself will not sleep until he says when he reaches the office he says you secretary call this number call this number we reached a level where people in the spirit should find your name and your number in the spirit when we are here praying and I say, just say your name. It is not because we are doing gibberish things. I am saying, say your name. Because we have many ministering spirits that are here helping us. What the angels are going to do is that they will pick your name. And they say, you, you are Rita. And then they will go and plant the name in the man who is a king that is supposed to help your destiny. When you know, the next day, someone will call you. Touch your neighbor say, you had better pick a known number. What an you had better pick a known number. I just some of you are very funny. Just because there is a whole multitude of people Avakovanja. Every other number that you say, ah ah oya manja. Ah ah oya. So even the one that is supposed to bless you, it passes you by. What an eba woman yiche to girako. Mugambe simu jikwate. Because May the Lord give you understanding. We have reached that level. So when I say you will buy without money, God, I don't know how to explain this. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 28, Paul, when they were being taken to Rome, their ship was wrecked completely and they ended up on the island called Malta. When they ended up there, you know the story where he was bitten by a snake and then he did not die. But after all that fiasco, the Bible says that there was a man on the island that helped them to lodge them and look after them for many days. And it so happens that in that same house, the, the mother of that man was sick. What are the chances that God broke an entire ship took the man to Malta, showed the, the power through the, the issue with the snake so that he can bring this man to a place where he can heal someone. Can you imagine? Like God orchestrates your life properly until the place where you encounter your destiny helper. My prayer is that you become the answer, you become the solution for your family, for the people God has sent you to. And I prophesy in the name of Jesus, starting today, as you become the manifestation of the true sons of God, let people dream you as their answer in the name of Jesus. May people be sent to you as their vision bearer by the power of the Holy Spirit. There are people that are going to bring money to your hands, saying, you know what? I saw in a vision that you are the man who will manage my finances. I'm going to keep the money with you in the name of Jesus. And whatever you decide for me to do, that I will do. Because in the spirit, God has registered you as a an entity of the blessing of God. Touch your neighbor, say it is your time. They are gifts that are sent to us. Gifts. The man himself is a gift. You encounter him and maybe you had a broken heart. The next minute, you've not even spoken about the broken heart. But the next minute you leave the presence of that person, the heart is no longer heavy. God has lifted it up. You have the, look, it is within your own capability for you to be able to identify this man because this man are supposed to help you fulfill your destiny now today if I be sent to you in the name of Jesus if I be sent to a man in this place by the power of the Holy Spirit the doors shall not just open they will remain open in the name of Jesus and today I call for men to seek you out in the name of Jesus. I release the magnitude of this anointing upon you by the power of the Holy Spirit. That men may start seeking you out. And men may start bringing opportunities to you. Opportunities of increase. Opportunities of prosperity. Opportunities for you to stand in the place of your destiny. In the name of Jesus, I command that there be a speed out of this covenant applied to you in the name of Jesus. That the things that you're planning to see by end of this year, they happen before this month ends in the name of Jesus. Let the spirit of God be released upon you in Jesus' name. Lift up your hands and speak to God. Father, we bless you. We bless you. We bless you. Give us the capability 
give us the spiritual intelligence to understand to be able to discern to know who has been sent for us even as i speak today is only a tuesday but if god has sent me for you i open doors that no man can close i open doors and i decree that they shall remain open doors of abundance shall be opened unto you no man in this place shall lack anything good no man in this place shall be in lack shall be in poverty shall stay in a place where they don't have what is enough by matter of decree in the name of jesus i come out that the doors be opened for an abundance to flow to your house to flow to your business to flow in your marriage to flow in your ministry that the lord who has put you under this covenant of an open heaven shall remember that this is the covenant that he has made with this man and in the name of jesus as long as you are you are a part of this covenant as long as you are submitted under that covenant may it be the same with you may heaven cooperate with you may you receive of the dew of heaven may the lord give you of the fatness of the earth may the earth cooperate with you may rain cooperate with you may the sun hear you may it only shine when you need it to shine in the name of jesus may the inhabitants of this earth be your portion in the name of jesus i prophesy starting this day by the power of the holy spirit men shall begin to come to you to flow to you the hearts of kings that have been close to you shall be open to you in the name of jesus i open them by the power of the holy spirit men shall begin to seek you out to do good things for you the scriptures say that men shall bring back unto your bosom so according to your giving may the lord open people's hearts to you i prophesy today in the name of jesus whatever prophecy is on your life i command that it comes to life in this very week in the name of jesus doors of travel let there be a confirmation doors of increase promotion open doors jobs by the power of the holy spirit let this be your portion as you leave this place today they open the heavens shall be open over you in the name of jesus and angels that are ministering spirits shall walk ahead of you shall walk beside you shall walk before you let understanding be yours let knowledge and wisdom be yours may you get the gift to discern spirits that when you discern that this is a man that has been sent on my behalf my god shall bring every power to a standstill until you have crossed over to the other side i prophesy your enemies i command as of today that they stand still as a stone until you break through in the name of jesus anything that is working against you by the power of the holy spirit let dread fall upon it let the power that is the holy spirit fire fall upon it may it be completely consumed until you are in the place of your destiny in jesus name father you are god and there is no other and you awesome and you awesome the gentleman in glasses I don't know what today what day today is but I hear in the spirit Thursday I'm speaking to you Thursday about the afternoon of Thursday this week what day is today Tuesday Thursday in the afternoon you will have a, a somewhat encounter with some people and it will include an opportunity for you it is a job opportunity I, I want to explain but uh, it is an opportunity for you to be a part of some project it is a work project say yes no I'm not saying say yes now I mean say yes to the opportunity when it comes you do, you do not have to understand the details of that but the Lord is trying to create a door for you to be lifted Thursday in the afternoon be alert, stay in the spirit. It shall happen exactly as I'm saying it in Jesus' name. And you, gentlemen, you, you, gentlemen, I'm talking to you. What's your name? I don't remember. The one in orange. Thank you, Holy Spirit.
there's someone that is going to support you. Listen, listen to me very carefully. It looks for me, uh, I don't know what date today is, but it looks like it is going to happen in about eight days. So in the spirit, all I can see is eight days. But in those eight days, I see a man, a gentleman, that is supposed to come to you or that you encounter in whichever way. Uh, I want you to understand what the Lord is talking about. You encounter this person. This person is supposed to help you to work or to, to ease a, a plan for you to travel eight days i see that you are going to meet this person break it into two because somehow i see something is supposed to happen in the next four days and then in the other four days it shall be fulfilled in the same manner in the name of jesus it is done by the power of the holy spirit stand up gentlemen stand up thank you holy spirit today is a tuesday I'm going to give you an instruction that will not make sense to you, but it is for your own good. And I don't think it will make sense for you. There, I see in the spirit that there are people that are coming to a place where you work. These people are foreigners. They are not, uh, they, they are not of this skin color. Um, so in the spirit, I see that they come to this place. Not so many days from today. I can figure out clearly how many days they are five four five but they will come it is a group of people there is a gentleman there's a gentleman um what do you call them they are white there's a, a gentleman that is white there is a lady that is short um she's white uh, but she's not she's not american and she's not uh british i think she's a different um from a different country the, the lady is shorter the gentleman that I'm talking about is taller and he has um, he has um, a color of hair. It's not black hair. What color is this? Sort of blonde or gold. It, that, that sort of color. And then there's a gentleman with them. And the gentleman has a sweater. And the sweater, he has put the sweater around his back and he's folded it in the front. The, the third person. So there are three people. But what I need you to do before that happens is that I need you. But by the way, the thing in my mind about this thing that God is revealing to you is about uh, for foreign currency. So there is a place I want to direct you to. I don't know why you have to go to that place. There is a place on on um, on. Um, um, There's a roundabout. <coughs> I hope we will get there. There's a roundabout here. There's a shell station here. Uh, about that roundabout. I'm trying to figure out what that place is called. There's a roundabout here. And then the building is there. And then as you go up, there's another roundabout. And it goes to the same building. You know where... You know where East African Development Bank is? The, the bank is on the is on the same building where that other building is. But on that building that I'm talking about, or let's say there is a road here, the East African Development Bank is there, and then there is another building. I don't know why I forget that building. I, I don't I, I forget what it's called. But there is a white sort of wall on it from the place of the of the from the place of the the roundabout. But it has a forex bureau. I am sure of it. Somewhere either in the parking or one of the shops, but it has a foreign, a forex bureau. So what I want you to do is a very simple thing, but it doesn't make sense. Also, I don't know why you have to do it, but you have to do it because there is something that is hidden in it. You need to go to that place. In the natural, I wouldn't know how forex works, but what I know is that there must be an exchange between you and that forex bureau does that make sense to you you make that thing happen today is a tuesday you make it happen as quickly as possible i think that you actually give in some money and then you make you, you make exchange of another currency it will not matter what the currency is just do what it is i'm asking you it is a gateway into 
into what the Lord wants to fulfill. Because the, the people that I, I'm saying are coming to you. They are going to come. And beyond them doing ex, uh, foreign currency, there will be an opportunity to do business. And it will be international business. I hope you have understood what I'm saying. May the Lord quicken your understanding and give you the courage to do what he's saying in the name of Jesus.